Just imagine how amazing it would be to create pro-level edits in CapCut, despite its limitations, that look like they came straight from After Effects. And even though the editing world revolves around professional apps, you could still find a way to fit in and become part of it. I'm going to break down every single technique, showing the exact way to create jaw-dropping videos. The secret sauce of easing to make you become a master, the master of editing. What makes a video truly stand out as well edited? If you take a look at those famous videos on YouTube, the first thing you'll notice is the smooth transitions between keyframes. Picture a scene moving from point A to B at a constant speed, like a song where you can predict each note. It feels flat, and your brain quickly loses interest. But what if we add a curve, or keyframe easing, to that movement? This subtle adjustment triggers a small dopamine boost, keeping viewers engaged and craving more of that delightful unpredictability. In CapCut, if we add an object to the timeline and create a keyframe at 100% scale about one second after the beginning of the clip, and then go back to the start and create a second keyframe at the minimum scale, we can create a zoom in effect. Now, if we leave it like this, the movement will feel plain and boring. If I right click on the clip and go to keyframe animation, we'll see a graph where we can make the adjustments we need. It has two lines. The Y axis shows value and the X axis represents time. But what does that mean? If we move a keyframe along the Y axis, it changes the value in our case, the scale value, while the x-axis shows the time between keyframes. What we're going to do is create a smooth curve along the path, which will add easing and make the motion feel more natural. Click on the keyframe and choose one of the two options to activate the Bezier handle. For the selected keyframe, grab the dot and move it slightly up and to the left. For the first keyframe, move the handle's dot to the right to create an ease-out effect. You may want to adjust the keyframe's position on the x-axis and fine-tune the handles to ensure the movement has the perfect speed. Now, I'm going to add a third keyframe to make the movement even smoother. This time, I move the keyframe slightly down on the y-axis and create a delicate arc in the path. And just like that, we have a smooth zoom-in and we can replace the object with whatever image we want. Now, let's talk about the bounce effect. This effect is one of the best techniques you can easily apply to your videos. Although I briefly explained it in a previous video, I want to break down one of my scenes and show you how to build it in CapCut to better explain this effect. We need four ingredients, a background, an avatar, a podium or desk, and a plate. Start by adding the background to the timeline, then scale it up until it fits perfectly. Next, apply a blur effect to the background from the effects section. Set the blur to 20 to create a bit of depth in the scene. Add the podium to the timeline and position it as shown in the video. Place the avatar between the background and the podium. Finally, add the plate, resizing and positioning it until it matches the scene. We're going to add a position keyframe for the plate about 10 to 20 frames after the start of the clip. Then, go back to the beginning of the clip, move the plate along the Y axis so it exits the screen, and add a second position keyframe. In this part, we're going to make a graph that looks like an L. Well, a humbled L. Open the keyframe graph and activate the handles for the Y position keyframes. Move the first handle down and to the left and adjust the other handle down and to the right to form that shape. You can tweak the time between the keyframes as needed. You still might not feel the bounce in the plate. To enhance it, we'll create a graph for the podium as well. Just before the plate hits the podium, a couple of frames before the second keyframe, add a position keyframe. When the plate rises and stabilizes, add another keyframe. Open the graph and delete the x-axis keyframes since we won't be needing them. Now adjust the podium graph to create a slight upward arc. It should be a very subtle curve. And with a few keyframes, you've got a bounce effect to spice up your visuals. Now let's create match cuts. While match cuts come in many forms, like objects or subjects, I'll focus on motion-based ones using elements or text. Let's say I want a text to come in from the left, and midway through its movement to the right, it changes into another text. First, add a text layer to the timeline, place it in the middle of the screen and change its font to Rubik. Scale it down slightly, then move the playhead forward 10 to 20 frames and add a position keyframe. Go back to the beginning of the clip, 
Move the text to the right of the screen and add a second keyframe. Then right click on the clip and enable keyframe animation. Enable the Bezier handles for both keyframes. We're going to create a path like this shape, meaning the text moves slowly at first and speeds up as it reaches the middle of the screen. Now, add a second text layer and adjust its scale and font to match the first text. Align the start of the second layer with where the first text's movement ends, then trim the first layer at that point. We'll create a position keyframe for the second layer here, then move 10 to 20 frames forward and shift the text to the right to create another keyframe. Just like with the first layer, we'll adjust the graph, but this time the text will start fast and slow down as it reaches the end of the movement. So, we need to create a rotated version of the previous shape to achieve this movement. And as you can see, the movement is incredibly smooth. I also like to add a touch of color and glow. Blue for the cold text and red for the hot one. You can easily adjust the glow color in the glow settings. And that's how you create a smooth match cut. What if I told you that you could create videos like mine with just a few simple clicks? While I use After Effects to make these videos, we've made it super easy for you. Just log into Auto AE, customize the pre-made templates, and you're done. Auto AE offers tons of templates, including blueprint styles, character animations, 3D screen movements, and so much more. I'll pin the link in the comments so you can try it for free. Now, let's talk about color correction. Imagine you have four elements, each with different colors and adjustments, and you want to align them with consistent temperature, color, or a specific look. If you simply add an adjustment layer to the timeline and start tweaking, it can turn into a mess. No matter what you do, it might not give you a clean, cohesive color vibe. To fix this, after adding all your elements to the timeline, select them all and create a compound clip. Then, go to the adjustment section, choose curves, and adjust the lumograph as shown in the video. Now add an adjustment layer to the timeline above the compound clip, ensuring it covers the entire length. What I usually do is slightly decrease saturation, exposure, blacks and shadows, while increasing contrast, whites and highlights. Adding sharpening and a vignette effect can also make your clips look bolder. In the HSL options, you can tweak specific parts of your video's color by changing the tint of selected colors. Here's the difference between the two clips. You can clearly see the improved quality and cohesiveness in the corrected version. Okay, we're done. Just I've included all the assets used in this video in the link in the description so you can follow along and practice while watching. You can create stunning videos with CapCut. All it takes is knowledge and patience. Remember, a good editor can achieve professional results regardless of the app they use. We all started somewhere, and now we can adapt to any editing app because we understand the art of editing because we are editors.